Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics today, I'm going to be talking about um, Age of Conan, Bullet number one, which is a Marvel comic, uh, 2019, uh, recently uh, recently released, uh, I think sometime last week. A um, little heads up, there's going to be uh, at least a spoiler or two. Uh, during this video, uh, and I will give you advance notice before I actually get to, you know, that particular um, that particular spot and my particular comments about that, you know, that one that one area of the story. Also, um, you know, I, I do listen to my feedback, and uh, one of the feedbacks uh, that I received from the last Conan comic that I had done was that, you know, I really shouldn't go in as unscripted as, you know, I had done. Uh, the last Conan comic that I actually previewed, I, you know, went through for the first time. You know, so you saw my genuine reaction to the first time I was going through that particular comic story. And, um, you know, this time I've, I've you know, read the, read the story twice and, you know, knew what points that I wanted to make about it. Uh, this is a review, all right? So um, I will not be showing all of the, um, you know, all of the comic. Uh, won't go through every single panel. Uh, just focus on the few of the things that I, you know, that I liked and, and a few of the things that I wasn't too, you know, uh, too crazy about or, or was just generally, like, confused by where the story was going. So, um, and so that's the unchained portion of this. So it's not so unscripted, but it, it certainly is going to be uh, enchained in that I'm not going to, or unchained, I should say, in that I, I'm not going to just do a puff piece uh, for this uh, particular comic. So that being said, let me start off by saying that my expectations for this comic were like through the roof. I mean, I was really, really, when I first came across it, I, I wasn't aware that it existed. And when I got the physical copy of the Conan number one, uh, the new series of, of, you know, Marvel's acquisition of the Conan the Barbarian, when I got that and I saw the, you know, the sales panel, you know, for this book coming, you know, upcoming, I was super, super excited. Uh, probably even more excited than I was for, you know, Marvel's return to Conan the Barbarian, uh, since I'm so familiar with that character. And, you know, my my sole, you know, exposure to Bullet as a character has been from Robert E. Howard's original Queen of the Black Coast, and then the recreation of that particular story in uh, Conan the Barbarian, the original series, uh, you know, Savage Sword of Conan had redone it as well at some point, you know, during, you know, one of the many decades that, uh, you know, I've been following the Conan the Barbarian as a comic book character. And so when I saw this and I saw this cover, I was just like blown away. And, and that's really the cover is the, you know, my biggest plus for this. Um, I, I don't mean that to sound as 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 negative as it might. But, um, you know, the cover is phenomenal. But uh, let me go into the, into the comic itself now. So I'm going to switch views. And we'll come over here. So, so here's the comic book. Here's the physical copy of it. And like I said, I mean, the, the cover art is incredible. It, it just grabs your, you know, grabs your eye to it. Um, Bolette is uh, is depicted in the way that she is in the uh, in the original stories as well. You know, uh, a very very light skinned, black haired, you know, very attractive, sultry kind of character. Who, when you see her in the original, you know, stories, I mean, she is a a pirate queen and and one who inspires you know, um, a great amount of fear in uh, ships who catch and recognize her sails, you know, on the horizon. And so that's how I was going into this 
you know, into this book, although I kind of was expecting an origin story. So, you know, I wasn't expecting to see her at that stage of uh, her career. Um, and she only appears in one Conan story, you know, and then she dies at the end of that story. So, you know, I knew that whatever this was, was going to be a lead up, you know, potentially to end just before that encounter or probably, you know, possibly even include that encounter, but from her perspective, which I'm kind of hoping that they do. All right. Um, it is a five book series, so they may or may not get that far into it. So going through, I, I just want to give credit. Uh, so Tina Howard is the writer. Kate Namechik is the artist. Uh, Jason Keith is the colorist. Um, all VCs is Travis, uh, VCs is Travis Lanham, uh, for letterer or VC. I don't, I don't know what VCs is. <laughs> uh, the cover artist is Sana Takeda, Takeda, you know, so like I said, the cover art is, is phenomenal. Love it. Um, I was really looking forward to this story. So we get into, you know, the first the first opening scene, and it, and it, it begins, you know, uh, in the, you know, in the city of Asculin, uh, which is a, a port city, and we start to see, you know, life in the in the port city. And this guy here is the um, is Belette's, you know, father figure. Um, he's actually not really her father. Uh, he had taken her in. And uh, he is a, he's kind of like the king of pirates. And, and so in this, in this area, he is an admiral. So he has many ships in his fleet. Uh, he's the, you know, considered the, the king of pirates. And we start going through. So this is your first view of Bullet. And so here she is. She's a, a young girl, probably in her, you know, mid to late teens. And... They're, they kind of do a build up. So you can see the graphics here. The graphics here are uh, not, you know, not quite what you, I'm typical, you know, I, I'm used to seeing in a Conan comic book. All right. As far as it's not, it, it it's, leans more towards the cartoonish and uh, not so much the, the gritty darkness that you would see in a Savage Sword. Um, or even in comparison, the the Conan um, the Conan comic book, um, and I'll, I'll do a, a, a quick you know show of that. Um, it is good art. I'm not saying that it's not. It's just stylishly not something that I was you know expecting in comparison to what we have on the front cover. You can kind of see the the difference in the style. All right, so. So going through there, you know, there you're having this father daughter uh, relationship kind of built up and discussed, and and then her her father is taken captive. All right, um, and initially you don't know exactly why, but he's assailed by a group, and he tells his people that support him to get his daughter out of there, and. Um, and so he is captured. And, and, and that's my kind of first disconnect is that uh, with the story or just lack of understanding, uh, if he's the king of pirates, how is this taking place in, in his city um, without anyone really coming to his support? So moving on, she, you know, she wakes up and she finds out that he was marooned. All right, on a, you know, on a sandbar that is just outside the city. All right, so if you're going to maroon somebody, you're not going to maroon them a, a simple rowboat away. And, and, and so that's my next issue, you know, with it, that it's kind of strange. So, so they took him and marooned him on a sandbar, the old pirate execution method. All right, and and yes, marooning is a pirate uh, is a pirate form of uh, of execution, as was walking the plank or 
keel hauling or any of those uh, particular methods of, you know, of um, executing a pirate who has done some kind of a wrong. All right, so she goes out there because obviously there's no one guarding to make sure that no one goes to rescue this marooned pirate. And so here he is, and she runs to him, and he's lashed to a pole, and he's beaten and and broken. And he goes through and explains to her that um, he has, you know, um, he has sent many, many hundreds of men to their deaths. And so it's a debt that he could not, you know, it's not like a debt that could be paid with coin. Uh, as an admiral, he had made these decisions, and so he has resigned himself to uh, accepting this, you know, form of uh, of punishment. And so he says, no, just, you know, do not rescue me. I don't want you to rescue me. I want you to just leave me to this, uh, to this fate. Um, because that's the honorable thing for him to do. Then, a couple panels later, he says to her, you know, I can't take this anymore. Um, and then she ends his life. All right, and so that's, that's as far as I'm going to get with the, you know, with going over the story. And that's my main part of the problem with the story itself and that is that if he's if he's honorable enough to say I'm I'm willing to accept you know and actually we'll come off of here if he's honorable enough to say I'm willing to accept this punishment because this is the pirate way that I'm being marooned and uh, I don't want to be rescued and then, you know, a short time later, he's time, perhaps the next morning, whatever, he says, listen, I can't take this anymore. Just end my life. All right. Which is breaking the first honorable way of allowing yourself uh, to suffer their usual punishment. Then he could have just as easily said, hey, listen, forget this pirate honor bull crap. Um, cut me free and let's get back to one of my ships and we will set sail and we will amass a new, you know, group of, uh, of pirates under my, uh, under my flag. And we will come back and, and retake my position, you know, as the rightful pirate king of, uh, of Asculon or, or of this particular port city. And, and, and so that's where, you know, the story to me just doesn't make very much sense. It's, it's this, you know, he didn't become a pirate king by being honorable to begin with. He's not going to say, well, I'm going to be honorable to accept this death and then turn around and say, but, you know, I can't take this anymore, so let's do the dishonorable thing and take, you know, you, daughter, take my life, you know, rather than cut me free and if we have to battle and I die in battle, at least I'm dying the a battle of, you know, I'm dying in death, you know, I'm dying in, uh, in, in the throes of battle rather than just tied up to a pole. It, it, it just didn't strike me as being um, plausible that this character uh, would behave that way, um, that he would, you know, that he would be so weakened, you know, initially in the fact that, you know, he's, he's grabbed a hold of by, by people in his own city. Um, and he has no support to prevent him from being captured. And then he's, you know, he's said to be executed just, you know, a, a, a short row away on a sandbar, uh, on, on an, you know, 
just outside of, of the city, which makes no sense. And then, you know, his daughter is able to just row out to him. There's no, no one preventing anyone, you know, uh, including any of his loyal crew uh, to go out to him and rescue him. So there's, there's no prevention of that, you know, and then just the, just the playing out of, you know, how he's, uh, he's killed by his daughter and then she goes off and, you know, we assume she goes off to eventually get revenge for him, which shouldn't have happened because, um, she could have, saved him and let him got revenge for being displaced on his own. So anyway, I am going to continue getting the, you know, the rest of the series and I'm hoping that the, you know, that the story, you know, progresses a little bit better than what it did here. Um, you know, it is still, you know, it still has great potential as far as the, um, as far as where the story can go, you know, and I'm just hoping that the the writing actually shows us a, a a an evolution that makes sense of the character of Belit and gets her to the point where she's uh you know where she's the you know the terror you know the t the tigress of the of the high seas you know the you know she's a real terror you know, uh, amongst men, because she's in a, you know, in the man's world of seafaring and piracy. And, you know, despite her gender, she is able to, um, you know, really rival Conan uh, in her position as a sea captain that is well respected. And it isn't until Conan and she meet that that she even takes a slight lower position and, and usually it's not uh you know that way in queen of the black coast but um he's as close to you know any superior she's ever had in the original story you know and so hopefully we will see that kind of evolution and and where she does become that true, you know, um, powerhouse of a character. Uh, and, and that once again is, you know, is dominant in the man's world of piracy on the high seas. So I'm looking forward to, you know, and hoping that the story kind of goes a little bit further in that direction. And it does bring us up to uh, does bring us up to the point that the Queen of the Black Coast story begins. So once again, uh, thanks for joining in. I hope you uh, enjoyed this, uh, you know, enjoyed this review. Um, like I said, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's always a difficult thing to take these characters that, you know, many of us feel that we know uh, from original writings that were done, you know, you know, practically almost, you know, 90 years ago and, and still capture that same sense of, uh, you know, of that character, um, through the, you know, through the, pers the, the perspectives of people writing today, you know, uh, trying to, like I said, capture a character that was written about, you know, 90 years ago. So, once again, I hope you enjoyed. Um, look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime soon. And I'm going to follow up this video with a, uh, you know, with another video, um, basically a channel preview of some of the new, uh, some of the new materials I just recently picked up. So looking forward to putting that video out there as well today. So you all have a good afternoon. Thanks for joining in.